Hello, everyone. This is Arrow and the Walk, the last line of defence in our battle against the Norman Ords. I am a northerner, so be nice to me and send food parcels and cylinders of gas. They are always welcome. <laughs> anyway, this week, an anaesthetist who nearly killed his girlfriend by injecting drugs during exorcisms was jailed. You'd think a bloody anaesthetist would be the ideal person to inject you with drugs, wouldn't you? However, I suppose it is a bit of overkill, a bit like hiring the director of Tesco's to peel your spuds for you. <laughs> this week, after a bit of dodgy dealing, Australia was poised to rent nuclear submarines in just a few years, while it waits for up to two decades for a fleet to be built without from Britain and the USA. Did the Australians know they would have to wait 20 years to get the submarines they paid billions for? Anyway, it is Britain, so what do you expect? By that time, Boris will have retired and run off with all the money, and Australia will have burned their country to a cinder so the Chinese don't have to bother. <laughs> Apparently, Birmingham is the worst city for builders bums. So where does your city rank, said the Sun this week. That's a bit intellectual for the Sun, don't you think? However, who's out there recording the incidents of builders bums anyway? You could get a very bad reputation sticking your notebook and pencil near workers' asses. <laughs> but how do you know you haven't seen the same bum twice? Do you put a little red X on the arse when you've seen it? <laughs> In the gutter press, there was a growing campaign to pardon shopkeepers convicted of selling goods by the pound against EU rules. It's good to see the old Avoir du Poix system of weights and measures back. However, Avoir du Poix is French, so let's ask Boris what does it mean. He says Avoir du Poix is a combination of Avoir, which means to have and du pois, which means two pears. I think I'll go back to kilograms, thank you very much. I don't like pears. <laughs> Boris Johnson finally admitted he has six children. They have all been signed up for a brand new series, Strictly Stop Coming, where different methods of contraception are tried on Boris Johnson to no avail. The series proposed that chemical castration is the only possibility and Carrie has been dosing him with red wine and cattle wormer as we speak. <laughs> Global Boris Johnson hails President Joe Biden this week as a breath of fresh air, ahead of a White House meeting. Whilst Joe Biden hailed Boris Johnson as a stale, farty, gut-wrenching smell from a sewage fire. <laughs> Don't worry, Boris, you can't impress all the people all the time, can you? The special relationship still exists, with American presidents publicly humiliating the idiots we elect as prime ministers. They fought a war 300 years ago to get rid of us. Are you stupid? Repeat after me. There is no special relationship. <laughs> Elon Musk said SpaceX's next civilian flight will have an upgraded toilet because the first one had challenges. Apparently, there were far too many floaters in the toilet, and astronauts will be put on an eye fiber diet. <laughs> Kerry Katona is having a fit. Frozen food could soon be off the menu due to a shortage of carbon dioxide. Did you know that every time you opened a packet of frozen food or opened a tin of fizzy drink, you were contributing to global warming? Is that what happened at the polls? Someone opened a packet of penguin curry and let all the CO2 out. <laughs> For heaven's sake, we've got too much carbon dioxide. How on earth can we be bloody running out of the stuff? Well, it is Boris, so anything's bloody possible. <laughs> the Daily Mail asked this week, is there anything Michael Gove can't do? After Boris Johnson handed his frenemy minister control of levelling up, 
in a new revamped housing and communities department and told him to deal with post-grenful planning crises, elections and Nicola Sturgeon. Poor old Michael Gove is getting all the shit to deal with. You think with looking like he does, he had enough shit of his own to deal with. <laughs> he has also been told to look after Boris Johnson's six kids and to make sure that Jacob rees Mogg's nanny keeps the clothes on when his kiddies are around. <laughs> Ex-lorry driver Jeremy Clarkson blasted M25 eco-protesters as smelly bearded people in Crocs. You can almost hear the northerners, can't you? They've got Crocs, lazy rich southern bastards. <laughs> this week, a boss, a mafia boss I suppose, claimed lazy and sport work from homers just want to watch loose women. Loose women are far-right libertarians. I think our boss is employing the wrong people. He should only hire social liberal people who want to watch documentaries like Panorama after the watershed. It's not exactly intelligent viewing, is it, loose women? What do his employees do? Fill bait bin teens with carbon dioxide by breathing into them? <laughs> Professor Dame Sarah Gilbert said COVID will eventually become like the common cold. Why didn't you tell us four weeks ago, love? We wouldn't have given you that bloody Barbie doll, would we? They're bloody expensive. <laughs> the gutter press said mathematicians have discovered this week that music really can be infectious, like a virus. If you're not careful, you'll have to be pumped full of drugs at a rock concert. But I've heard that already happens. <laughs> this week, police tried to slam the brakes on Jeremy Clarkson's plan to expand his diddly squat farm shop. Jeremy can now sell his fruit and veg in pounds and ounces. He's like a pig in shit. And if you want a pig in shit, you can buy one of those too. <laughs> This week, an oxymoron, a teetotal Weatherspoons fanatic, visited 373 of the chain's pubs without having a single pint. The news is that Weatherspoons has run out of beer. Well, there you are, Mr. Martin. You've still got one happy customer anyway. He couldn't give a shit. He ate your bloody beer. <laughs> Weatherspoons has also run out of Chateau Rothschild. So Jacob Rees-Mogg will have to get his afternoon glass somewhere else. <laughs> In the Daily Mail, excited royals recalled the Duke of Edinburgh's mustard joke. Apparently he had all his kids roaring every time the Queen's corgis tried to lick their own asses. <laughs> no, the prince got all the children to squirt mustard on the ceiling. Lesser joke more a way of expensively damaging a period dwelling paid for by the public. <laughs> However, if we want any more interesting information about Prince Philip, we'll let you know, Prince William. <laughs> Besieged at Balmoral, said the Daily Mail, Prince Andrew is still with the Queen at her Scottish home, where he was accused of hiding from Virginia Roberts' legal team. So he's found a good hiding place, as he daily mail, and it sounds like you're jolly pleased. However, the rest of us think he deserves not a good hiding place, more a good hiding. <laughs> there was delivery chaos as bees were nesting in a Royal Mail office, and it caused the roof to cave in. The post office said they had given up on plan A, and it was now time for plan B. <laughs> Supermarkets rest to secure CO2 this week, as official talk stalled. Supermarket bosses are beginning to get panic attacks and are asking all their staff to keep breathing into brown paper bags full of frozen food. <laughs> A new book this week said that Trump didn't want to build golf courses in Africa because he was too scared of lions. Trump, however, claimed that he thought a golf club was a thing that natives hit lions with. <laughs> I suspect that's a lie, and the real reason he didn't build any golf courses in Africa was because he doesn't like black people. <laughs>
Michael Gove saw his new department branded the Department for Leveling Up as he emerged as a key reshuffle winner. The Tories' idea of levelling up is to put the daftest, most incompetent minister in the government in charge of the people who need stuff most. Putting Michael Gove in charge of levelling up is like putting Rudolph in charge of a venison factory. A report in the news this week said that towns will not level up unless they get five-year cash pots. So every five years you give each town in the north millions of pounds who will make sure it goes to businesses, individuals and organisations in the National Front who operate in the town, whilst making sure that those greedy, nasty wokes in the town don't get a bloody bean. Now that's not called leather up, it is called twisting the knife in the wound. <laughs> The UK could seek to join a US-Mexico-Canada trade pact, as Boris Johnson gave up this week on an American trade deal with Joe Biden. It looks like the Tories are going to have to deal with Mexico as a new, more direct source of cocaine. It's called the UK-Canada-Mexico cartel. <laughs> so that's what the Australian nuclear submarines were for, then. This has been TW, 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 and error with the woke. And if anyone tells you that it was me who burnt the cake, it couldn't have been me. I was on bloody Bake Off at the time. <laughs>